This is the plaintiff, Harriet Taylor. She says her neighbor, the defendant, cut a vine growing on her property and hanging over a shed, and the thing crashed down, smashing her Lalique and Baccarat crystal. Her Lalique elephant and her Baccarat crystal glass are now garbage. The shed is smashed to smithereens, and she's suing the uncaring, irresponsible defendant for every penny of the $5,000 she's owed. This is the defendant, Annette Michael. She says she owns the house next to the plaintiffs. And yes, she had a vine she cut down on her property because it was causing an insect problem. She, however, never entered the plaintiff's property. There was never any mention of an outside shed being damaged. And this is the first she's heard of crystal being stored out there. She has no idea what the problem is, has never heard of someone storing expensive designer crystal in an outdoor shed and thinks she's being rooked. She's accused of having a jack in the beanstalk moment. All parties, please raise your right hands. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. You see the computer, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're Harriet open. Taylor, you yes. are suing your uh, neighbor. Actually, you don't live there. You own the property, right? Annette Michael for $5,000 in damages that you say are occasioned by her negligence. Tell me what's going on. Um... Mrs. Michaels, my voice changed. I'm a World Trade Center survivor. I want to let you know that. You mean, were you in the area or were you in the buildings? I'm going to give you all of that information. I meant at the World Trade Center. Were you I'm in the area? I'm a or responder. You... We was officers. A responder. I'm going to give you all of that information. Just tell me, were you, what kind of responder were you? Uh, the mayor, our mayor, volunteered all city workers to come to clean up okay. and to fix things and uh, Okay. Shift through the the rubble. And you were a city worker. Yes. So it was after the after the the explosions. Yes. Okay. All right. So go ahead. What happened is she cut a vine down. Where was the vine? The vine is on her property. Okay. When she cut the vine down, it um it ran it it came right down on my shed. Okay. So I live on the side of her, okay. and then there's a big piece of vine, a big piece of wood from the vine, because it's been there so long. Okay, so you mean it, bark, like the vine had it? Yes, okay. that is stuck into my, the back of my shed. Okay, so it damaged your shed? Yes, it did. Okay. In my shed, I live in the middle of the ghetto, I want you to notice. Okay. I, in the middle, in, in my shed, I have all my expensive stuff, like, Crystal and stuff like that. Why? Why? Because now if you come and rob my house, you won't get nothing but a TV. You okay. won't get nothing else because it's all in my shed. What all do you my keep my stuff is in my shed. Okay, what is it you was your stuff damaged in the shed? Is my, that what? Oh yeah, I lost um I lost my elephants, my Lalique le elephants, and I lost my baccarat crystal. This. Oh, that's a good sound. Um, <laughs> how, what, how did the Lalique and the Baccarat get damaged? Oh, because there's, a, there's this bark, this bark ran into the back of my shed and is a big hole there as we Do speak. Do you have pictures of the damaged crystal? N no. I re-cleaned up. I had the guy to come and clean up. This sent me to the hospital because I have COPD, <clears throat> emphysema, and a lot of other things that I, I got from the World Trade. Okay. That so you made... don't have any pictures of the broken crystal? No, I But you I do didn't... have some pictures. Can you hand them to Douglas so I can see? Yes. I want him to see. This is the pictures. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Okay, is this the shed that we're talking about? Yeah, that's my shed. Is, whose wall is this? That's, that's my wall. wall. 
Okay. So it's vine that grows on the wall? Exactly. Okay. I need to under, I'm going to walk over to where you are. If I look at this picture, I understand what you're saying. Here's your shed. Your house is here. This is her wall. Here is the vine. Okay? Where I don't understand you is what is this a picture of? That's the picture of the big vine that we just took out this weekend because it was stuck in the back of my shed. Okay. So this is th right in front of my garbage for the garbage man to come. Got it. But so I understand what you're explaining to me. There is vine and the vine grows on the side of her property, which abuts right to your shed. And according to you, the vine came down and damaged your shed? Yes. Did she yes. pull the, the vine? The vine didn't come down. Okay. She cut the vine down. Okay, but she didn't remove the vine? No. She left it on your shed? Yes. Okay. Did she ever discuss with you, hey, you have a vine, the vine is growing, I want it down, or you just were removing your own vine? Um, on about the 13th of July, she called me over because she normally sees when I'm going into my house. Okay, what is so, that your house? You rent it out? What is no, it? No, it's my house, but I rent it out. Who yes. do you rent it out to? Um, we have a homeless shelter. It's a private homeless shelter. Okay. Have you had discussions with her about that before? Oh, no. She called me on the, over on the 13th. Okay. I was going into the house. Mm -hmm. She came to her back, uh, back door, mm -hmm. and she called me, and she says that the vine that's in the backyard is making insects go into her shed, and that the vine is on my property, and I should remove the vine. Okay. I immediately agreed. I said, no problem. I'll remove the vine. Okay. So on the 21st, uh, five of us went there uh, because the vine, it's, it's been there now for over 11 years. I bought the house in uh, 2004. Mm -hmm. And the vine has been there for over 11 years. Okay. And uh, In fact, I've got uh, pictures. Okay, she's got them. a picture of the vine half taken down and there's somebody staring at her. What happened there? Okay, um, we started taking the vine down because it went all the way up to the roof. And then what happened? It fell on her shed? No, it was actually hanging on a wire. And then I went around to her house, I rang her bell to ask her if she, because when we went around to the back, we realized we had no access to the back of her house. But uh, she, she didn't answer the door. Okay, could I say something now? No, not yet. Here is a picture that you also took, and this is a picture of your shed. We cleaned the top of the shed off and put, put plastic. This is plastic on top. Well, of you're gonna have to prove that. Do you have a picture of a damaged shed? No, no, no not there. Okay. You have a thousand back. pictures, but you don't have a picture of a no, damaged shed. No, because we couldn't turn the shed around in the back. It's, you I don't know do what it. you're saying. You know exactly. I don't know where you're standing here, but that's a really good vantage point to take pictures of a damaged shed because you have pictures of a shed with you this, cannot and then you have pictures of this, which you say, oh, no, no, that's a new roof I put on it. Can you show me a damaged George, roof? George, your honor, please. Yes or no? Can you chair. show me a damaged roof? Um, if you look on one of them, let me see if I should... I'll see if I can show you it. You can see it's damaged here. See that line back there? And then in the back, the total back is where that big piece I showed you. And it's still growing. Here, the shed, I've been there since 1970. Now with the ivory, when she cut it down, the bugs and stuff came into my house. Well, she didn't give birth to the tree. No, I mean, God she, makes the trees. She could have treated, she could have she, treated the tree. I didn't tell her to yeah, do that. Yeah, but should just let the ivy right where it was. It wasn't bothering anybody except for the structure well, of your why house. Why couldn't she treat it? it Did been. you ever ask her to pull down the ivy? No, I asked her to treat the ivory to treat it. Right? We've been doing, everybody's been treating the ivory that lived in that house. They treat, they spray and spray, and that's what helps. The, How the, long have you owned that place? 11 years. Okay. Since 2004? Okay. Yes, ma'am. How long after you guys were trying to take it down and she didn't answer the door, did she just go ahead and get somebody to finish the job? I'm not sure because... A one day or a month? Um, no, it had to be probably about two or three days because um, one of my clients kept going over there and ringing the bell. And then after they removed the vine, after she had someone else remove the vine, uh, then she answered the door and told him that she's going to sue me. 
That was what she said? I'm going to sue you? Yeah. What did, did you, let me see what you're suing for. Let's see. $5,000. All right. So $1,598 for the shed. Why? Why? Because... Because you can't even show me damage on it. I mean, but you I, said, I, you see I'm that line? You, That's it. Because what? the shed is there, and the, and the thing, that big piece I showed you, went through it. Okay. Shit, no, no. You're going to have to show me in, that a big piece went through it. happened in her, on her roof. I need was, you to listen to me. Do you have any proof that a big piece went through it? Because all of the pictures you're showing me show me a shed that nothing went through. Do you have pictures of the shed? Uh, yes, ma'am. May I see them? Yes. Can I show you something else with sure. about the shed? The shed was put in after 9-11, and it was put in by Home Depot from scratch. That's lovely. They did everything. Okay, all you've handed me now is a, a price off the internet of what it costs to get a not, shed. Not off the internet, yeah. Yeah, but that's not what you need to come to court and get $1,500 for an old shed. No. All right, so you're, it's like Jack and the Beanstalk. All right, um, you are also suing for $800 for Lalique and Baccarat, and you don't have any pictures of broken... La yes, I know, that's, that is a, a, a Baccarat. Well, let's yes, see. it is. Hand it over. Yeah, right, look but, at it. But do you, um, do, do you have any pictures of damaged ones and receipts for them? So Your that Honor, let me show you something. I cannot go in... I can't even go into the, to the shed. Would you like to see what you Please. What is that now? It's uh, where that, sh that all of that stuff made me go to the hospital because I couldn't breathe at all. What you see about CP C C COPD is nothing like what happened to me because of those bugs and the trees and all that stuff that day. That was when I discharged out of the hospital on the 25th. If you look through those papers, you can see all what's going on. And let me tell you something else. Mrs. Um, Michaels has a house with nothing but beds on it with criminals in there. The criminals come to my, they sit in front of your door, they, they stand on the corner, they out all day. The Department of Buildings has been trying to get in there, they cannot get in there. This is from the Department of Buildings. And welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. We are uh, right in front of the TMZ celebrity tour bus. Uh, we decided to kind of combine the two and talk to people around the country who are looking for celebrities or whatnot. So, does somebody who lives in a neighborhood have a right to complain to their next door neighbor um, that somebody running is kind of running a halfway house with a lot of criminals inside? Um, I don't think they do. I mean, it's not your house. Is it your problem? Well, they say it's their problem because they're saying it kind of, you know, it, it's it's kind of dangerous for them. I think we should always be working for the betterment of society. You know, I don't think they really have a right to complain. These people have been, you know, have done crimes, right? Yeah, but I mean, I don't think you should complain unless they're harming you. It's not. They are enough going inside the courtroom. All right. Can I ask you, you have a, you're also suing for $219.76 for an exterminator. May I see that bill? Yeah. Do you have you. proof that you paid uh, people $250 to clean up? No, it's not there no more. That's the proof right there. <laughs> Well, but that doesn't None prove... None of that stuff is there anymore. I understand. That proves that it got done. It doesn't prove how much you paid I to get... I can't do that. It, that proves that it got done. It doesn't prove how much you paid to get it done. I want proof that you paid somebody $250 no, to remove it. I could... You can't take these people off the street and say, give me an affidavit because you did this work for me. No. I can't do that. No, but you know what you can no, do? No, I did you a good job. You can take a pen and you can take a piece of paper and you can have them acknowledge that they received it, the money. I, I, they did a good job for the little bit of money, the, mo the stuff that was in that 20 How much bags. little bit of money was it? It was like $250, $200 for one and $50 for the other. She sent a man to my house to ring the bell to tell me she wanted to give me $100. That's when I told the man, the criminal man that, that lives in her house, that I'm going to court. Okay. All right. And I can't have her, because she runs a criminal house, just take and, and do what she wants and get away with it. That's a bit much for me. So is this really nothing. about the fact that she runs a homeless shelter right behind she, your house? Yes, she does. Right. Is she that runs, what you're mad she at? She runs, uh, no, they convicts, the people that they let out of jail. 
Shit. Is it a halfway house? Yeah, that's it's a transitional she, house. Transitional yes. house. That's is what it they a call transitional it now? house for, for folks who are uh-huh. transitioning out of jail? Uh, yes. Okay. But um, the clients don't normally hang around on her steps, they nor in the neighborhood. They hang out in the whole community. There's in a whole fact, bunch of people from the city that's got all of these papers on her because they don't want that there. One okay. lady, one lady had, she was so afraid, she was old, the lady lived right next door to her, had a heart attack. It's not funny, it's really sad. It's sad that we, we, we lived there so many years and earned our home and earned to be in such a status, and then there's somebody that comes along and just takes it and do what they want and have criminals come in our backyards and the side of her ringing our bells and acting like they smoking reefer on the steps and kind of going on. I got, that's not right. Okay, all right. Um, and then the last of what you're suing for to reach the $5,000 max was $2,132.24 in pain and suffering. Yes. And I think you've described um, what you felt was your pain and suffering. Based on what I have listened to, I am going to order the defendant to pay up the cleanup costs of the vine. It's something that you undertook to do, and then it was left there. I understand that you're saying that you were trying to pick it up, but even you recognize that, there, that you know, it's something that needed to have been finished. Um, I don't think 200, and, and I know she doesn't have the proof of it, but I think $250 is a reasonable amount. You probably should have hired just people to take care of this. You should have planned it. You should have uh, you know, consulted with her on a day that you would have access to being there. I think that it's pretty obvious that a lot of what is going on here is that she doesn't like your existence back there. Mm. She doesn't, okay? Um, and that's something that you have to take up in a different forum, not here. That's oh, something that you can go that. to your city and you can say whatever you think they're doing wrong and that they're not, because they're not to exist. But if you don't feel like they're doing it according to the laws, then you, you, that's something you complain to the city and you keep complaining to the city and then you get them to do. But here I've just got to decide one thing. Did they do something wrong? And what is that worth? It is certainly not worth the cost of a shed you can't prove was damaged, the cost of Lalik and Baccarat you can't prove was broken. Um, it, the fact that you hired an exterminator, okay, hire an exterminator, but the fact that the IV exists and that bugs exist on the outside of our surroundings is not her fault. She doesn't have to pay for your exterminator. And frankly, you shouldn't have undertaken this because this is where you got yourself into this problem where you were trying to be nice. We're done, $250 verdict for the plaintiff. Thank you. Well, so this uh, neighborhood battle winds up in an award from the judge f- to you of $250. What, what's your reaction to the outcome here? I feel that I did not get due process. You realize you, you realize you could you didn't provide proof of the shed damage and proof of have, the crystal I damage. I should have bought. I should have took more pictures. Mm-hmm. How are you going to resolve this neighborhood problem? Well, I'm already. I'm, I'm getting there. Mm-hmm. It's being gotten to. Don't you, you worry, not. You're not done fighting, are you? Listen, I'm not dead yet. All right, all right, right down this way. Okay. Step on in here. What's what's your uh, what's your feeling about this here? I feel really badly for her. Um, because, Why do you feel badly for her? Because there is no egress in the back of her house. God forbid there's a fire or something, and she runs out her backyard. Mm-hmm. She would have no place to go. Well, she's and not that, happy about the existence of, of the transition we house know that's, right there. We know that's that's right? the real issue. This is a problem you have in the whole neighborhood with all the neighbors there. No, they're about twenty transitional houses within a ten block radius of of us. Mm -hmm. And there is one more thing. If a person does have such items in a shed in the back of their house, it should be covered by their homeowner's insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Harvey? Okay, Kurt, you know, if somebody has overhanging trees, branches, or whatever, um, what you do is, this is such a good idea, I'm telling you, you send them a note, maybe an email, because what it does is it then puts them on notice. And you say in there, if anything happens, now that I've put you on notice, you're going to be responsible for the damage. They'll usually do the right thing if you do that.